Hi everyone, welcome back to Dragon Image. Today I'm going to balance my 5D Mark IV on the Ronin S. And the reason I'm doing this is not because it's particularly difficult, but because a lot of people will go, Angelo, how long does it take to set up the Ronin S? So, here I have my DSLR, here I have the Ronin S, which you can see is severely kind of maxed out on balance wise, and I've got my base plate. So, I'm currently using the Canon 24-70. This is, as I said, the 5D Mark IV, which is ideal for this type of gimbal since it doesn't block the back screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to position this fairly close to the back since the camera weight of the lens kind of counteracts. Let's tighten that up. Okay, so if you haven't balanced one of these before, there are plenty of videos showing you exactly how to do it step by step. For this particular video, I'm just going to try to do it kind of as quickly as possible. First thing I encountered is that this is hitting the side. So just loosen up that bottom one, move that over. Now I can slide that on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is with this hand, I'm just holding it and I can see that a lot of pressure is going on my back finger, which means that it is back heavy, which is front heavy. So I just kind of slide it backwards until I can feel that pressure kind of ease off. And I'm just trying to get it close. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll kind of lock that one off. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is this one. So again, what I'm gonna do is loosen up this screw here, slide this backwards until it doesn't wanna fall forwards or backwards. Okay. Oh, what am I hitting? Oh, a little clip, okay. So there, so if I let go of it, falls forwards. Loosen this up. Slide that back, still forwards. Loosen it up. Go backwards, okay, so. If I let go of it there, it's pretty much there. If I let go of it here, it's now forward heavy because I got the balance on this part very, very accurate. So again, I just go back to here, but I go a bit force forward, so I just need to slide that backwards a little bit. Um, there's no real way to make micro adjustments apart from just doing it by touch. Um, there's no knobs you can turn to go forwards or backwards. It's just a matter of just getting it as close as you can. So there you go, let go of it. The idea now is if I let go of it, it kind of stays in the position that I kind of let go of it. Okay, the last, the second last one, which is this one here. So again, this is my left and right, so you can see it kind of falls down this way. So loosen that one up, which is that screw there. And now I just move that over until, again, it doesn't want to fall in either direction. And normally what I do is once I've kind of got it balanced with the lens that I kind of like, I'll kind of make a mental note of where they were. And if you're doing this a lot, you'll kind of get a feel for it. Okay, so if I let go of it, it kind of stays there. Then the last one is this one down here. This is the weight before, in front and behind it. So if I hold it like this and let go of it, and it kind of, so you can see that it's kind of a little bit back heavy, but not nearly enough to make me want to correct it. That's fine. Okay, and that's how quick it was to balance. So this is the Ronin S. You turn on the Ronin S, the first thing you do is press the button at the bottom and then you turn on the main button which is here on the side. So you've got to turn the battery on the base first on, then this one that's caught off a lot of people. Um, so it's one of those things to remember. As you're probably aware, it's just kind of a basic kind of single handle gimbal. One of the things that they have kind of transferred over is this little trigger here. So pressing this locks it off which means that it's kind of cool for different things. So if I wanted to kind of quickly kind of do a pan, I can kind of lock it off and it doesn't really affect the thing. Then if I let go of it, it will start to follow. This is really good if you just want to kind of do a quick reposition. So for instance, let's just say I'm shooting someone and I want to be tilting up, I can hold that there and now I can move it. And then if I want to come back down, let go of it, bring it back down, lock it off again. So yeah, there you have it. So that wasn't particularly difficult. Um, you can see yourself getting a lot faster at it the more you kind of do it. And this kind of 
as you can kind of see, the 5D allows me to quickly and easily see the back of the screen. So again, A7S is kind of perfect for this. It's probably a little bit, uh, can carry a payload a little bit higher than an A7S. Even if you've even had it completely rigged up, it wouldn't be a problem at all. Um, there are some kind of cables so you can use focus wheels and stuff like that. Um, I'm not particularly that fussed uh, with it because the, the autofocus on the 5D Spark 4 is very, very good. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that you can might get used to and kind of want to play with. So if you're interested in the Ronin S, uh, please visit your local Dragon Image. Thanks.